Hallelujah. And good evening. How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. You're going to be the salt of the world. Amen. Not pepper. <laughs> Where it's to be the mustard, not the ketchup. People are playing too much ketchup. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Thank you, Master. In the book of Timothy. Thank you, Jesus. First Timothy 4, for a moment. Old. Verse 1, now the Spirit expressly says something very important. If it says expressly, that means it's vitally important. That in the latter times, or we're in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Faith. They'll depart from their connection in the spirit, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. You know, there's a great falling away going on globally. It says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So he's saying there's going to be a great falling away that those who know the truth. In other words, they will not be able to overcome themselves. The lust of love of self will constantly overcome them because of the influence of these deceiving spirits. Now, what separates... Us from the world, one of the things is our choices. Amen? Because your choices, behind every choice there is a desire. And it separates us from the world. Because the world chooses things that are not pleasing to God. We're to be choosing everything that's pleasing to God. Because we have a heart change. Amen? Remember, in this transition, there's a transition going on for a pure heart, clean hands, and a pure conscience. And one of the other things that separates us from the world is the integrity of righteousness. See, the world is looking for Christ, but they don't know it. They're looking for help, but they don't know it. And Christ wants to express himself through us. But the things that we choose or desire will nullify that ex release of the expression of Christ. There's an integrity of righteousness that multiplies in our life that separates us from the world. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 4, The, the Bible tells us don't be like the world. In fact, don't love the world, which is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And lust is living under satanic torment. Why? Because it's always pushing and influencing for a desire that's not of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, let's speak it together. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. In other words, what can be a fiery trial? Can temptation be a fiery trial? Amen. Anything can be a fiery trial. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when he is, he's, his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he's blasphemed and on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. 
Again, there's a difference between suffering from what you sow is what you reap. There's a difference in suffering. Amen? Doing the right thing before God in a Christ-like way, you're going to be persecuted. The Bible says that. Amen? But if you're being persecuted for not doing the right thing, that's not the sufferings of Christ. Amen? That's not the sufferings of a Christian. That's what you're reaping, what you're sowing. Verse 17. For the time has come for what? Judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Again, we see that there's this transition right now. There is judgment going on. And it's the transition, again, is the purifying of the conscience, clean hands, and a pure heart. The judgment in the house of God, where there's lies, deception, rebellion, and according to the word of God, and the prophecies that are coming up right now, we see it is coming to an end. They're all lies and deceptions, rebellion, are coming to an end. Why? Because they're going to be exposed. This is happening globally. It's coming to an end. So is it going to come to the end first in the house of God before the world? Yes. Sufferers, like upright or the integrity of righteousness, are Christians. Not as a deceiver. Again, there's a pure heart, clean hands, and pure conscience God is bringing his body to. Integrity is the practice of being honest. Showing consistent and uncompromising faithfulness to the authority of Christ. I'm going to say that again. What is integrity? It's a practice of being honest and showing consistent and uncompromising faithfulness to the authority of Christ Jesus. Integrity is a practice of being honest and showing consistent and uncompromising faithfulness to the authority of Christ. Righteousness is the practice of what we call an upright character. We are viewing things through the heart of Christ. We are viewing things through the heart of Christ. That is righteousness. So there's an integrity of righteousness, which is in practice, putting things into practice and producing righteousness as upright servants of the Lord. It separates me and you from the world. When you begin to, your conduct begins to act like the world, well, then that definitely nullifies Christ. When you begin to make choices and decisions and desires, those that are out of God's time or out of God's will, is displeasing to God. Amen? If you're led by the Spirit, you'll be led by all truth, aren't you? And there will always be peace, joy, and righteousness being led by the Spirit. In Proverbs 11, Hallelujah. Proverbs 11. Is rebellion sin? Does it bring a curse? Hello. Proverbs 11, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Dishonest skills are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes what? Shame. But what the humble is what? Wisdom. What does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. So see, pride will nullify your hearing from God. When you are humble, you can hear God. Verse 3. The integrity of the upright will what? Guide him. But the perversity of the unfaithful will what? Destroy them. That's why the devil has access to come and steal, kill, and destroy. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteous delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. 
The righteousness of the upright will deliver them. But the unfaithful will be caught by their what? Lust. There's that desire again. That's living under satanic torment because individuals that are bound by lust will do everything to fulfill it. Again, pride to shame humbles wisdom. The unfaithful get caught in their lust. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. Verse 4. Everybody okay? Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. What is lawlessness? It's rebellion. And sin is what? Lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, which sin is the presence of evil. And in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Again, lawlessness is rebellion and it brings a curse. Many times people fall into what we call a false justification instead of righteousness. They justify a choice or decision instead of being righteous. You know, I can't tell you how many times the enemy will try to trap us. I've gone to the store and stuff, and man, I'm, I'm loading stuff up, and I'll, I'll walk out with my cart, and I'll realize after I put everything together that something didn't get checked out, and it's too late. I'm all, almost all, all the way home, and the enemy will justify it. That's eh, okay. In fact, he'll even tell you it's a blessing from God. No, it's not. You're being tested. So you can justify that decision and that choice. Or you can put it into a righteous state. And when you go back, you pay for it. It's just like a bowl of candy. Those big round bubble gums. And it says, take three for free. But somebody goes in and grabs four. And they walk out. And they justify the fourth one. Instead of going paying for it. Oh, it must be from God. No, it's a curse. Why? Because you justified it by false justification instead of what? Righteousness. That's what separates us from the world. See, the world will justify it. You are a carnal, you justify it. But when you're led by the Spirit of God, you don't justify nothing. Everything's associated with that character of Christ because you're viewing through his heart. You're viewing everything through his heart. And when you do that, you are upright because you know that you're pleasing God. Amen? Oh, happy days. <laughs> yeah, no free bubble gum, man. It opens the door to the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy if things are being stealing or killing or destroying in your life, you know you got open doors. And what happens is, the, uh, unless there's a turnaround and a repentance away from it, it will repeat the cycle. Until there's a full submission to Christ and his purpose. Because one of the problems is, there's not the ability to deny self. Self is always first. Remember, Lust always puts self first. Lust does what? 
Always put self first. And what's one of the other things it does? Blinds. It blinds. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2. We want to be separated from the character and conduct and the ways of the world. Remember, we spoke in about the prophecy that darkness would cover the earth. And we know that darkness has been covering the earth, especially with all those false garbage and lies and deceptions that are being slowly exposed. But they're being exposed. But judgment is in the house of God. And, and while darkness is covering the house, I mean covering the earth, and judgment is in the house of God, our light should be shining brighter. We should be advancing more and more. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 1, let's speak it together. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What's grace? God's plan. Amen. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in a warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That affairs of the slice is lust, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules. These are called rules of engagement. Amen? The affairs of this life, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and lust of self, I call pride, according to the rules of engagement. And of course, we know that God is the rules of engagement is a pure heart, pure hands, and clean, a pure conscience also. No one is above the law, the law of God. Nobody. Nobody gets away with it. There are rules of engagement that God has specifically. We're to be submitting to everything that he has before us. The Bible says what? Submit to God. Then you can what? Resist the devil. See, so if you're truly not submitting to God, you can't resist the temptation or the influence. It's impossible. It's impossible. I don't care how long you're praying in tongues. I don't care how many good things you do. See, your talents and abilities only carry a certain distance. Righteousness, the practice of righteousness, will carry you all the way. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 16. These are the baits of Satan. Many people walk around with hooks in their jaws. Proverbs 16, 16. Let's speak it together, please. Now, what does wisdom do again? Tells you what to do. In verse 16, how much better to get wisdom than what? Gold. And get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Understanding Okay, wisdom tells you what to do. Wisdom tells you how to do it. Amen? Verse 17, the highway of the upright is to what? Depart from evil, not promote it. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride, personal reverence unto a deadly end, goes before what? Destruction and a haughty Spirit before a fall. Better to be of the humble spirit with the lowly than divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely or the law wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Hallelujah. Again, get wisdom, get understanding, depart from rebellion and pride. No one breaks the law and gets away with it. Amen? And that is the word. In Proverbs 10.
The Clintons try to do it all the time, but they're not going to get away with it. Biden's trying to do it now, but he ain't getting away with it. There's what we call a constitution that is backed by God Almighty. And anybody who comes and tries to alter it or break it will stand before God because that's to protect this country. It was signed in the presence of God. Proverbs 10, 6. Blessings are what? On the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. You know, you always got to think about what legacy are you going to leave behind? What are you going to leave behind wherever you go? Is it going to be a good legacy? Promoting of Christ's legacy? Or promoting a flesh legacy? Hallelujah. Verse 8. The wise in heart will receive commands, but the prating fool will fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely, not insecurely. But he who perverts his ways will become what? Known. Praise God. In Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 31. What's it say? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for their heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But do what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. If people seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, they wouldn't be have to go on after lustful things and all the other goofy things. Because why? Everything will be coming to you. Amen? The problem is, is making decisions that are righteous or justifiable. And those justifiable ones will always bite you again. Amen? Verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is our own trouble. Praise God. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be coming to you in his time. Amen? Malachi chapter 2. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know we're called to be priests and kings? Amen. And a pre you must fulfill your priesthood before you can fulfill your kingship or a warrior. If you're, not, if you're not a worshiper, you can never fulfill your kingship position or warrior position. Because it's all associated with the tabernacle of Christ. And verse uh, 1 in chapter 2. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, I will send a curse upon you. Yes, I have cursed. I will curse your what? Your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you did not take it to heart. He says he'll cause your blessings to be cursed because not bringing every... In other words, things that we do, choices, decisions, things to that degree, are they bringing glory to God or not? Are they justifiable decisions or righteous decisions? This is what we must look at all the time. Is it bringing glory to God? Can your choice, your decisions, things that you're choosing, bring glory to God? If they can't, then you know it's harmful to you. It will open the door for the enemy to come steal, kill, and destroy. 
Some people step in this area and can never get out. They can never break loose from this. It recycles all the time. And Jeremiah 17. Because why? They really never took it to heart. And the Bible tells us to examine ourselves. Jeremiah 17 and verse 7. <clears throat> Now let's start at verse 5. Is everybody there? Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in himself and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Now you may think, well, my heart didn't part from the Lord. Well, if you're trusting in yourself instead of God, your heart departed from the Lord. Verse 6. For he shall be like a what? A shrub in the desert. That means dry. Shall not see when what good comes. In other words, going to miss opportunities from God. Many people are missing opportunities right now from God. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in salt land, which is not inhabited. Verse 7. But blesses the man who trusts in the Lord and not himself. And whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be a, like a tree planted by the rivers, by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes. Look at how many people feared when all of this stuff was out there. Running to get all kinds of strange medication. They feared. Why? Because they weren't trusting in God. They're trusting in themselves. They will not fear when he comes, but its leaf will be green, and they will not be what? They won't be what? Anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. You know, anxiousness is nothing but fear. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can what? Know it. I, the Lord, search the heart, test the mind, test the thoughts, test the desires. If he's testing the heart, he's testing the desires, right? Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Blessed or cursed. Missed opportunities or advancements. It's up to us and what we choose. Amen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Starting at verse 1, please. Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you've received from us how you ought to walk into what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave to you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification, your separation unto him. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. And sanctification and in what? Honor. Not in passion of lust. Like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but to what? Holiness. Therefore he rejects this, does not reject man. But God who has also given us the Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves ought taught are taught by God to love one another and indeed you do so toward all brethren 
who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Mind your own beeswax, and work out your own work with your own hands, and, and as we command you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack what? Lack what? Nothing. Nothing at all. You know, we are in a uh, desperate time where we are hard-pressed on every side. The enemy is full-blown trapping as much as he can. Go to 2 Corinthians 13. And we'll close here. Again, this is a time where our light should shine, not be put out. In verse 5 and 6, what does it say? Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith, whether you're connected. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. But I trust that you will, re you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this also we pray, that you may be made complete. Now, something powerful here, because you know, one of the things that the enemy, we have free will choices, amen? And again, in these free will choices, they either support the collective body, or they disrupt the collective body. If it supports the collective body, there's advancement. If it disrupts the collective body, there's holds until it's corrected. See, the enemy preys on weaknesses. He knows where we're weak at. He goes there. He preys on it. Amen? Again, our abilities and talents can only carry us so far. It's the integrity of righteousness that endures and overcomes every lustful temptation. But how do you maintain that? You must maintain a humble heart. You must expose any kind of pride in your life. See, pride usually will come first before the lust of the flesh, the lust of self, and the lust of the eyes. We want to view everything in an area where it's the righteousness of God. Amen? And we view everything through the heart of Christ. What's Christ say? Again, I've shared this before. People used to have the bracelets on. What would Jesus do, right? I don't see him anymore because nobody could do it. They got convicted too much. They started to throw him out. What would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Jesus say? What would Jesus see? The Bible tells us to keep the Lord before us in all things. If we did, we sure weren't make, making stupid decisions or ungodly ones. We'd be making, we wouldn't be making justifiable ones. We'd be making righteous ones. Amen? That's, again, the lack of relationship. That's where people fall back into religiosity and tradition and take things for granted in God's presence and everything else. They lose the fear of the Lord, the reverence. And they lose the area to where he's our fulfillment. And whatever we do. See, you won't lust if you're fulfilled by him. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And Lord, we want to be a sign and wonder to the world. We don't want to be misled. We want to be a light that shines your glory so the world will see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.